Tara, the spiritual heart of the Irish people around the world. For over 5,000 years, a site rich in history, myths and legends. Though the wooden structures that once graced this landscape have long since vanished, the earthen foundations which remain evoke thoughts of Tara's glorious past. Rothnari, the royal enclosure. Onfora, the royal seat from which 142 of the High Kings of Ireland ruled. Zach Cormick. Its figure eight ramparts encompassing Onfora. Rothnashanid, so named because of the synods held by St. Patrick and others over the centuries. Duman Anil, the mound of hostages, a passage tomb, where in 1955, during its excavation by Professor O'Riordan, the remains of more than 300 individuals were unearthed. The passageway of the tomb was constructed using massive stones, known as orthostats. On the west side of the entrance, one of those orthostats is covered with numerous Neolithic carvings. Theories abound as to their meaning yet no one has been able to apply those theories in deciphering the carvings until now. Rathnari, Onfora, Zakormik, Rathnashanid, Rathkalkan, Fohas Grania, Rathlera, and numerous other monuments. In short, the carvings are not artwork, celestial representations, or a calendar as some have theorized, but simply a map of the Hill of Tara, which predates the site as we know it. Two of the most prominent monuments on the hill are Anfora and Rath Nashanad. As seen on the engravings, they look much different than they do today. From 1992 to 1997, under the direction of Connor Newman, the Discovery Program conducted a survey of Tara. Their research included non-invasive techniques as well as a literary study. Their report states, Rothnery is defined by a bank and internal ditch. However, in his 1837 essay on the history of the antiquities of Tara Hill, Dr. George Petrie noted that Rothnery consisted of two banks. Seventy years later, in his book, A Small Social History of Ancient Ireland, P.W. Joyce stated that the circumvaliation of Rothnery can still be traced all round and consisted originally of two walls of parapets with a deep ditch between. By the time Professor O'Riordan excavated the area 50 years after Dr. Joyce's book, the fifth rampart had been erased from the landscape due to agriculture. As for the fourth rampart, in a 1999 article for PAST, the Prehistoric Society's newsletter, Connor Newman wrote, a host of other interesting features has also come to light such as the continuation of a previously identified enclosure which, if projected, appears to surround the Fora and Takormic, and also reflects the curvature of Rothnery. The second and third ramparts are still visible in the landscape. As seen on the engraving, the barrow within Anfora is smaller than that of Rothnashanad, yet today they're comparable in size. The reason for that is the ditch between the mound and the first rampart was filled in, creating the larger mound. With regard to Rothnoshanid, during its excavation in 1952 by Professor O'Riordan, evidence of several timber structures were unearthed, which were part of a much larger enclosure, a hinge. These structures were the first phase of construction at Tara. The carving on the orthostat depicts the second phase, which consisted of three earthworks, a barrow, an oval barrow, and double court tomb. Overlays of all three show that the plan drawing and engraving of the orthostat match up not only with each other, but with the photo. The third phase of construction consisted of the timber structures being removed and replaced with the earthen ramparts we see today. The facts and evidence that have been presented, along with those cited in the research paper, show that not only did the carvings on the orthostat represent many of the monuments of Tara, but that Tara was far more important and far more complex than previously thought. Tara is a very ancient and sacred place. I mean, it's uh, it go, it's 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 way older than the pyramids. Um, it contains the oldest astronomical observatory in the whole world. Um, and you know, in ancient times, uh, 
fire was of huge significance in ritual terms, in terms of sending messages, um, all sorts of things. So, so now we have the, the sacred fire here, the vigil fire, as we work to save Tara. Archaeologists and historians have long argued that Tara's boundaries extended well beyond the hill. The monuments depicted on the orthostat may very well contain evidence that supports that belief. Aside from the monuments already mentioned, the Tara complex also includes Rath Maeve, a hill fort located half a mile to the south of Tara. To the east is the hill fort Rathlu, and just to the north of that, an area known as Lismullen, all of which are threatened by construction on the M3 motorway. At Rathlu, the motorway cuts into the base of the monument. At Lismullen, a 2,000-year-old timber enclosure and souterrain, which were only recently discovered, will be raised and paved over upon completion of the current excavation. The Tara complex is a major part of the cultural heritage of the Irish people, yet it's being destroyed by those in the government who have been entrusted with protecting it. In stark contrast, the governments of third world nations are going to great lengths to excavate, restore, preserve and protect their monuments and prosecute those who injure or deface them. This sign posted at Tara reads in part, injury or defacement of the monuments is severely punishable by law. Construction of the M3 won't simply injure or deface the Tara complex, but will destroy parts of it and forever mar the beauty of the surrounding landscape. In view of the circumstances, it's incumbent upon the archaeological community to accelerate the peer review process. And based on the evidence presented, which constitutes a material change in circumstances, request an environmental impact reassessment by onboard Planola. In addition to petitioning UNESCO to have the Tara complex declared a World Heritage Site. The carvings on the orthostat are a snapshot of Tara as it looked nearly 5,000 years ago. Considering the potential destruction of the complex by the M3 motorway, and further still by agriculture, in 50 years, all we'll have left are our snapshots. This Mullen, the Henge, which was the, the major discovery after the National Roads Authority archaeologists did um, apparently huge research into the area and announced that there was nothing of any archaeological significance. And then virtually the first sod they turned with the first digger turned up this extraordinary wooden henge which is the, the, this is the astronomical observatory it's um, it's way older the, it's the same idea as Stonehenge only way older and um, and when they turned it up everybody in Ireland thought oh that's the end of the road because this is obviously uh, an extraordinary national monument and um, and everything that's categorized as a national monument has to be preserved and protected but when they turned up the henge on the road, uh, on the route of the road, um, the Minister for the Environment announced, actually, we changed the law, uh, whatever, a year ago or something, um, and now we don't have to preserve and protect national monuments. We just have to measure and photograph them, and then we can destroy them.